Wait, wait, wait. Come on. Hey, want more horsepower in your street machine? Simple, just drop one of these in it. A blown big block with twin carbs, nothing to it. But seriously, this week's show is all about horsepower cheap tricks. Oh, and we're not talking about an 80s rock band. Buddy, I think that was a record hooking a motor up. Yeah, that was pretty cool. All right, now what we're talking about today are new and old budget-minded parts and procedures designed to make more horsepower. Now the first two involve this 383 small block and our trusty DTS engine dyno. We got this mule motor as a short block from GM, then added a set of dart heads and an aluminum intake manifold. All right, the first trick we're gonna try is not only cheap, but a no-brainer to install. It's a stub stack from K&N, and the whole idea is to increase airflow in the carburetor by decreasing restrictions around the choke horn. Goes on like so. Now install a stud. Okay, after the wing nut, we can fire this baby up and see what it does. After making runs with and without the air cleaner, we picked up a few horses, but it seems like the stub stack would get better results if the crack with more incoming air. Next, many people swear that the cheapest power comes right out of a bottle. Spray, giggle gas, squeeze, whatever you want to call it, it works. And it's relatively cheap with single shot kits starting at about $400. Now we picked up this slightly used Nitrous Express Hitman kit for right at $200. Now it'll fit all 4150 style intake manifolds and the thing I like about it is most nitrous plate systems use a spray bar, but this kit uses a billet plate that has holes drilled in it to introduce the nitrous and fuel to the intake manifold. Plus it comes with jets that range from 50 to 200 shot. Well, first of all, nitrous oxide itself is not combustible. It just helps fuel burn faster because of the oxygen content. How much? Well, just check this out. The air you breathe is 72 parts nitrogen, 23 parts oxygen. The oxygen content of nitrous oxide, 50% per cubic foot. That's some good info, Joe. Higher octane gasoline burns slower than lower octane gasoline, which is critical in a nitrous environment. So you need to step up the premium fuel for a 50 to 150 shot of nitrous. Anything over that requires race fuel. Now they may call it laughing gas, but it's actually a liquid before it comes out of the bottle. And it creates a lot more cylinder pressure and stress on the rotating assembly. So it's a good idea to run a forged piston in a racing application, heavier duty connecting rod, even a forged crankshaft. Okay, what are the bottom line benefits for a weekend drag racer? Generally speaking, if your car runs 12 to 13 second ETs, a 100 horsepower shot of spray is good for a whole second off your time. Well, time for us to get busy and get to work on this kit. Now in the car, this nitrous bottle would probably be installed in the trunk in a safe place with this nozzle facing forward. Of course, the other end will go to our nitrous solenoid once we get it hooked up. Don't forget on your plate to make sure your holes on your spray bar are pointing down into the engine. Very good point. Gotta ask you a question. What's your reaction when you hear those kids call this stuff NOS? Oh man, I just wanna... <laughs> I can't say it on camera, but <laughs> I didn't think you could. <laughs> well, now the carb can go back on. Next, the 50 horse nitrous jet goes in place, followed by the blue nitrous solenoid. Well, now the fuel solenoid, and I don't know about you, buddy, but I like the way they got the inlets and outlets marked. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier. Of course, we didn't need that. We nah. knew where they were, but yeah. All right, now the throttle activation switch. All right. Now we're talking. Then a little wiring work to finish up the installation. And that's that. I had a customer come by one day and he says, hey man, I put nitrous on my motor. You want to check it out? Open up the hood and it looked like this. It looked like you just threw all the wires on top and said, hey, how you like it? So yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. Man, at 475 horsepower, that 50 shot of nitrous gave us 57 more. Torque is 498 foot-pounds, which is an increase of almost 90. Well, now that the motor's cooled off a little bit, 
We're going to turn our attention to something a lot of people ignore with their first nitrous experience, and that's the spark plugs. After your first blast down the track, you want to check each one for signs of detonation, and that would be little tiny black and green dots around the electrode. Ours look pretty good, so we can put them back and make another run. Our second run on the dyno is with jets good for 100 horsepower. Finally, a set of 150 horse jets and taking out more timing before the final run. Now we're up to 560 horsepower and 625 foot-pounds of torque. And we're going to go ahead and quit while we're ahead. See, we've been conservative on the timing because we want to keep this motor around for more tech later on. Plus, our pistons are hypereutectic, not forged. Anyway, though, 140 horsepower over baseline, 216 foot-pounds of torque. It's easy to see why a lot of people swear that the best bargain in power is good old nitrous, whether it's Nitrous Express or NOS, right? Oh, here we go with the dirty words again. <laughs> I'm not going to make any more comments on that word. Okay. We're back with more cheap horsepower tricks. Now here's one that most of you do-it-yourself guys can accomplish over a weekend. The best part, it'll only cost you about 75 bucks. Now as most of you know, an engine is nothing more than a glorified air pump. With this intake manifold, the more air you can move through it, along with the additional fuel you can add, the more horsepower the motor's going to generate. Even though you don't have a professional porting booth, you can still do a professional porting job at home in your garage. All it takes is a little bit of patience and a few simple tools. Plus, you won't be spending the $200 to $250 of professional engine shop charges. To show you how it's done, we're using a Victor Jr. small block Chevy intake manifold from Edelbrock. And the first thing we need to do is clean the surfaces using a little lacquer thinner. Cleaning the intake flanges gets rid of any dirt or oil. It's a chicken. Unless you it's want to chicken. look like a cartoon character, you're going to need a, a pair chicken. of gloves for this. <laughs> now, we recommend you get some of this Dichem Machinist layout fluid and brush it all around the ports of the manifold. After it dries, which only takes a couple of minutes, you can lay your gasket down and either tape it or silicone it in place. Now, using a metal scribe or even a pick, scribe the intake around the edge of the gasket. All right, now we can go ahead and remove the gasket. Now check out how the die cam allows for a clear and precise scribe mark into the aluminum. Now before we get started on the porting, here's a little tip I wanna share with you. If you don't want aluminum shavings all over your garage, go ahead and put your shop back to use. Now I made this little contraption using a piece of sheet metal and exhaust tubing that bolts to the top of the intake and sucks up all the aluminum shavings. Now you'll wanna use a variable speed Dremel tool or a die grinder with a regulator attached to it. That way you can control the speed of the burr and prevent it from jumping around and possibly damaging the runners. Now I'm using a Matco die grinder with the regulator that has a gauge attached to it. The burr we're going to use is a cylindrical ball nose burr. But first we want to spray the runners down with WD-40 to keep the heat generated by the porting down. During the porting, you want to let the burr do the work with just a little pressure on the grinder. Also, to get that additional flow, you only need to go in about an inch and a half, although it won't hurt to go a little deeper. After every couple of minutes of porting, make sure to reapply the WD-40. When you get really close to your scribe marks, go ahead and swap out the burr for a 40 grit cartridge roll. Now this will allow you to smooth out the roughness that the burr left in the runner. When you're done with the 40 grit, move on to 100 grit, and that'll allow you to give the runner a really smooth finish. Well, that's it for the grinder and the tools. Now it's time to thoroughly clean out the intake manifold, and please take your time. The last thing you want are a bunch of aluminum shavings left in this thing that can get down into your engine. Now, if you don't have a parts washer at home, you can get this done with a pressure washer or even a garden hose. And to break up the WD-40, good old brake cleaner does the trick. 
After getting it cleaned, go ahead and spray it out with air or let it air dry. All right, once again, you're gonna need an aluminum burr and some die chem you can pick up at your local industrial supply house, plus a variable speed grinder and some cartridge rolls you can get at your local home improvement store. Now this is definitely an easy project as long as you take your time, plus you get the benefits of more airflow, more power, and the pride in knowing you did it yourself. Now up next, Joe's got another trick up his sleeve that's gonna put a lot more power to the wheels of a Z06 vent. Hey, we're back in action and still on the hunt for more horsepower that won't cost you an arm and a leg. Now, by the way, this is where we keep all of our engines for upcoming projects. Now, carbureted engines have always been good candidates for power adders, and they'll always be around for racers and hot rodders alike. But now let's take a look at how to make more power out of a more modern pushrod engine. In 1997, GM introduced the LS1. Now they started this design from a clean sheet of paper and what they ended up with was a 5.7 liter small block that made 350 horsepower at the flywheel. Now you could first find them in vets and that's what started a new age of high performance, high tech horsepower. We borrowed this LS7 powered Z06 that belongs to a buddy of ours down at Extreme Auto Accessories in Memphis. We thought this little black beauty would be a perfect candidate for one of the most popular and easy to use power enhancers for late models, the power programmer. Now this one from Hypertech is a max energy for the LX7. They claim power gains of up to 34 horsepower, 35 foot-pounds of torque, but first we got to get it up on the dyno jet for a baseline. The new car is bone stock, of course, and we'll start the run at 2,000 RPM and click it at seven grand. Okay, here we go. Okay, the car made 439 horsepower at the rear wheels, which is pretty much on the money, factoring the engine to chassis dyno differences. Okay, time to plug the Hypertech Max Energy unit into the port. Well now, gotta close the door. Make sure all the accessories are off that might be drawing power. Oh, I don't think we'll need a radar detector for this. Next, we can plug in the programmer and follow the prompts. Now, in addition to maximizing power and fuel economy, it's got features that let you raise the top speed limiter, correct the speedo and odometer for bigger tire sizes, and you can update it on the internet. A few minutes later, the programmer's done its job, and we're ready to see what kind of job it does at pumping up the power. All right, check this out. With the Hypertech tune, we made 460 horsepower. Now it's a peak to peak difference of 21. Now our max gain was up here at 7,000 RPM. That came in at 34 horsepower. Too bad we don't have time to check the fuel economy benefits of the programmer. That's important to everybody these days. Now these sell for 379 and for 50 bucks less, you can get this Econ version. Got the same power and fuel economy tuning without all the extras. Well, now it's time to crunch some numbers and see how much money we've spent. I'll have the grand total for you in just a minute. Okay, well, I guess I didn't need remedial math in school after all with this thing. We just tried a handful of performance components and one procedure in hopes of a good payoff without a big payout. Now, the first thing we tried was this $35 K&N stub stack on the carb. No appreciable results on the engine dyno, but guys tell us these things are good with the incoming air out on the street and strip. 
Then with that secondhand Nitrous Express kit we bought for 200 bucks, we made 140 horsepower over stock. Easily the most power for the dollar, but that's only power that's available in occasional doses. The intake port matching Mike showed you increases airflow into any engine, and this allows you to add more fuel to match that air. Labor intensive, but materials only cost $75. Well, finally, the Hypertech Max Energy Tuner produced 21 more horses than a new Z06. Now that's full-time power plus reportedly more fuel economy. Cost $379 for a grand total of $689. Not too shabby. Here on Horsepower, we show you the basic steps of power producing projects, but there's only so much time available in each week's show. So here's a way you can learn all those fine points step by step. Power Building Videos is a DVD series with sets that cover subjects like superchargers, nitrous, carburetors, and rotating assemblies. It's hosted by race engine builder Aaron Johnson, and he goes into detail covering everything you need to know about all kinds of applications. It's all covered in plain English with special tips and insight from Aaron. Now the Power Building DVD sets will cost you about 30 bucks. We get emails every once in a while from guys who want to know, do any of today's additives really work? Well, we decided to put one to the test on our chassis dyno. And the one we're going to try is PX3's new Extreme Oil Booster. Now, according to their test, it's yielding horsepower increases up to 5%. We baselined a 6.1 Hemi with conventional oil. We got 358 horsepower at 5,400 RPM. And 365 foot-pounds of torque at 4,600 RPM. Then we added the PX3 synthetic oil booster. What the heck? Well, the numbers speak for themselves. 367 horsepower at 5,700 RPMs, 379 foot-pounds of torque at 4,600 RPM. Well, they say the dyno doesn't lie. That's right. Of course, they recommend that you add a bottle every other oil change. We don't have time, of course, to check out the other benefits, but hey, nine horsepower, 14 foot-pounds of torque, I'll take that any day. Finally, a hot part that fits in perfect in what we've been doing today in the search for more horsepower and performance. Now, a while back, we saw some impressive results on the engine dyno using a Fitch fuel catalyst, but they also make these drop-in pellets that improve fuel economy, emissions, and horsepower. Now, they use a special metal alloy that refines fuel to its factory fresh state. You can get a box of eight and this installation tool for a little less than 120 bucks. Well, that's it for the show today. We hope to see you next time.